Well, greetings everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Undoubtedly, we all have watched and observed with horror the terrible atrocities which occurred in Norway when somebody who was mentally deranged, to put it mildly, ignited a bomb on a marketplace and after that went on a shooting spree and killed almost 100 young men and women. And of course, there is absolutely no explanation, no justification for that kind of horror from a human standpoint. But at the same time, what is disturbing as well was how the left media jumped on an opportunity to use this terrible atrocity for their own political agenda. And we have to be very careful that we are not jumping on the bandwagon and follow that agenda. What am I talking about? Well, let me first of all read to you what Reuters reported on July 24. It says a man suspected of Norway's gun and bomb massacre had belonged to an anti-immigration party and opposed multiculturalism, Islam, and the cultural Marxists of the establishment. So what the left-wing media has done, they have immediately said, okay, now therefore he did that, so what he opposed had to be right, so we have now to support it, including immigration, including multiculturalism, and including Islam. This article goes on to say he was accused of gunning down 85 people, and it's a little bit of a debate as to how many actually did die in that youth camp. He was a Freemason, and a spokesman of that organization confirmed it. Freemasons meet in secretive fraternal groups in many parts of the world. And some say, aha, because he was a Freemason, so the Freemasons are responsible for that mass murder. Goes on to say, the suspected killer was also a member of the Oslo Gun Club. So everybody who is a member of the Gun Club is kind of an accomplice of this terrible atrocity. It goes on to say, his tastes in music included classical. Well, so if you like classical music, you are an accomplice of that terrible atrocity. And he also liked trance, which is a hypnotic form of dance music. Now, if it's in fact a hypnotic form, that's bad. You don't want to be involved in anything like that. It goes on to say the profile also between is between references to political philosophers. So again, if you like to read poli political pol philosophers, then you are a mass murderer or an accomplice. And gory popular films. Now, of course, gory films are a danger. That is true. If you are watching these kind of gory films, and I don't know what they mean by gory films here, but if they are very brutal, if they are very demonic, then you shouldn't watch that because you can, in fact, become influenced by them to your detriment. But in addition to that article, some papers, some institutions have also labeled this mass murderer, this suspected mass murderer, because he hasn't been convicted yet, but apparently he has admitted to the crimes, they have labeled him a fundamentalist Christian. And as we pointed out in our weekly update, and we are sending out weekly updates over the email, and if you want, would like to receive one, please just let us know your email address, and we are going to send them to you free of charge. So in our recent weekly update, we pointed out that his Satan-inspired actions have nothing to do with true Christianity. How can one harmonize his murders with Christ's words in Peter, or to Peter? And remember what Christ said in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 52 when Peter took up the sword to defend Christ against the illegal arrests in the garden. He said, put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. We go on in our update to say, on the other hand, his abominable conduct will unfortunately provoke a reaction from our left-wing liberal media of propagating multiculturalism. And they will serve as a foundation for further criticism of and attacks on so-called, quote-unquote, fundamentalist Christianity, without realizing that true, fundamental, in quotes, Christianity is the acceptance of all biblical teachings and commandments, including the one against killing. 
They don't tell you that. They tell you this man was a fundamentalist, a fundamental Christian, and so therefore that's bad. Because as such a fundamental Christian, he went on that killing spree. What a nonsense. What an absolute atrocity in reporting. In fact, the interesting thing is that he might not have even been a quote-unquote Christian, not even a nominal one. The paper World Net Daily reported on July 24 that a review of his 1,500-page-long manifesto, which he wrote, shows the media's quick characterization of the Norwegian terrorist as a quote-unquote Christian may be as incorrect as it was to call Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh one. Yet while McVeigh rejected God altogether, this man writes in his manifesto that he is not religious, has doubts about, about God's existence, does not pray, but does assert the primacy of Europe's quote-unquote Christian culture as well as his own pagan Nordic culture. It goes on to say that he hails Charles Darwin, whose evolutionary theories stand in contrast to the claims of the Bible. I was quite interested in reading that statement because most quote-unquote Christians even would believe also in the evolution theory by Charles Darwin, which as this article points out very accurately, is in total contrast to what the Bible teaches. Did you know, my friends, that if you are a Christian, you cannot believe in the evolution theory? The evolution theory is the explanation of an atheist how this world came into being. And so we have atheist scientists who tell you that the universe wasn't created, it created itself. A total contrast to what the Bible tells you. And this guy apparently believed this kind of nonsense. The article goes on to say, the terrorist also candidly admits he finds no support within either the Catholic or the Protestant churches for his violent ideas. So he admits that even they do not, at least openly, state that something like this guy did is correct. Now, of course, if you look at the Crusades, though, in the past, you get a different picture, however. Now, the EU observer kind of supports what the fear was, which we had already expressed what the reaction would be. This article by the EU observer dated July 25 says, EU leaders have also spoken out strongly against this attack. But then it goes on to say that German Chancellor Angela Merkel last year said that multiculturalism had utterly failed. And UK Prime Minister David Cameron also tackled the issue head on in February saying that it had failed. And now they are saying, oh, well, that's bad because this was the motivation for this guy to go out and to kill all these innocent people. What nonsense. Do you believe one minute that because these guys, these politicians have said that multiculturalism has failed, he was motivated now to go out and kill those young people who were attending a youth camp? That is just plain nonsense. But you see how quick our left liberal media is jumping on certain conclusions to propagate their own agenda. Now, a word of warning, however, some on the right have also not done anything to support truth and veracity. Here's an article by the Israeli paper Haaretz, which was published on July 26, saying this. Glenn Beck, the American right-wing talk show host, compared the victims of a shooting at a Norwegian summer camp to Hitler Youth in his radio program, according to a Daily Telegraph report. Daily Telegraph, a paper, of course, in Great Britain. Beck describes the brutal incident as a shooting at a political camp which sounds a little like the Hitler Youth. I mean, who sends their kids to a political camp? Disturbing, he added. And, of course, the reaction of condemnation was great, including in Israel, for him having said these kind of things, which are blatant nonsense. I mean, here are young people who are going to a youth camp and they invited their killing because they went to this youth camp? What nonsense. Let me also tell you that Glenn Beck, you know, for many years has tried to propagate his political agenda to the American people. But ever since he converted to Mormonism, he also understands himself as a religious figurehead, trying to propagate his religious viewpoints to the American people. And he says a lot of nonsense. I want you to understand that. 
I recently saw a program with him where he sat and talked about Mr. Bonhoeffer, a Protestant minister during the Nazi era who opposed Nazism and then was killed by the Nazis when he was put to a concentration camp. And he said, Glenn Beck said, well, we cannot identify with Jesus Christ because that's Jesus Christ, but we can identify with Mr. Bonhoeffer. What absolute blatant nonsense. You see, as a true Christian, not only do you have to identify with Jesus Christ, you have to have Jesus Christ living within you, through the Holy Spirit, leading you, guiding you, showing you how to live. Also, insofar as your concepts are concerned, your opinions, your thoughts, you have to put all your thoughts under the obedience of Jesus Christ, it says. So let's not get fooled by either the left or the right or the middle or anybody when it comes to opinions which are being uttered, but let's make sure that what we believe and what we stand for is in accordance with God's word and God's word alone. Multiculturalism has failed. There is no question about it. But those who have made those statements are not in any way responsible for the murders and the atrocities of this lunatic over there who went out to kill innocent people. Let's not get all emotional about these things by drawing wrong conclusions, whether it's from the left or the right or the middle or whatever. But let's stay balanced and objective and uphold God's word and God's word alone. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch Program. <laughs>